It was summertime in the 90s. After exhausting ourselves in the sun, all the neighborhood kids and I gathered at my house to play Nintendo 64. We played games like Clay Fighter 63 and a half, Mortal Kombat, and Mario Kart, of course. But one game really hyped us up above all the others, Bomberman 64. Four of us battling one another in multiplayer mode, racing against the clock to blow each other up. It was neck and neck. All that screaming my poor mother endured. But when all the other kids left, it was my turn to get excited. I played story mode. For a little kid, this game's story felt like an epic tale of adventure, loss, justice, and betrayal. The sprawling levels each their own world for me to discover, paired with some of the best music I'd yet heard at that point. Hi, I'm Soundfine Guy, and today I want to talk about my love for Bomberman 64. More specifically, I want to talk about the music, the soundtrack. I'm going to go over a few of my favorite pieces of music from the game. I'm going to talk about why I think they're so incredible. And then I'm going to attempt to identify the sample sources that were used to make the music. Bomberman 64 was released in 1997 for the Nintendo 64 and marked a significant shift in the series. Developed by Hudson Soft, it was the first Bomberman game to transition into 3D, breaking away from the traditional grid-based arenas and introducing an action-adventure, sort of platforming style for its single-player mode. This departure brought fresh variety, giving players imaginative and puzzle-filled stages rather than the usual focus on destroying enemies in confined spaces. Bomberman 64, above all else, is is an adventure game. It has themed worlds, puzzles, enemies, and even a charming story for the player to progress through that might even have a twist or two. But let's get to the real reason we're here, the soundtrack. Composed by Akifumi Tada, whose video game credits are few, but has worked extensively on anime. Oh, and as a music arranger for Grandstream Saga? His credits include quite a few Pokemon movies, and if you're a fan of those, then you've likely heard his work. His work in Bomberman 64 has a lot of range and really elevates this game to a new level. For example, let's take a listen to the track Green Garden for the stage of the same name. What a colorful piece of music, perfectly suited for this brightly lit stage. That drum beat is going hard. Actually, it kind of sounds like Streets of Rage. And this funky bass line. And of course, the bright ascending melody. Nostalgia aside, for as much as I can put it aside, Tata's work on this piece of music is cheerful, bright, and gives the impression that, yeah, you're ready to blow some shit up, but you're gonna be cute while you do it. This track truly gives the feeling of the start of your adventure, the first level. Technically, you can start on any world, but Green Garden is clearly intended to be the first. And boy, is that feeling captured here. And as long as we're talking about capturing a feeling, we're going to have to bring up Blue Resort.
this is a hit. By now, we've all come to expect accordions from canal areas in video games, right? Well, what a creative and unique implementation of that. We've got more killer bass lines and yet another unforgettable melody. And then later in the song where there's that change up. Oh yeah, that's brilliant. And the little denouement just before it loops again. Just beautiful. Mr. Tata is a master of his craft. I'd like to point out that I think it's really these drum loops that are waving the Bomberman flag the hardest. It's almost like the percussion is the thing that makes virtually all of the music in this game sound like Bomberman. And it makes sense. If you listen to this track without the drums... It sounds just a little too peaceful, like an RPG town or something. This really paints a picture of what Blue Resort may have been like before it was captured by Altair and his goons. Speaking of which, I'd like to now share the third and final track. When you finally finished what seems to be the last level of the game, you're met with the presumed final boss, Altair. This is his theme. This is potentially my favorite piece of music in this entire game. What absolute badassery. This guy has been waiting for you this whole time. You've defeated his whole squad and he's pissed. The synths, the drums, you're familiar with all the instruments by this point, but the way they're utilized here feels darker and more powerful. Altair is a formidable final boss, probably. And then you defeat him and this happens. The percussion gets faster. The arrangement is more hectic and powerful. A transformation to match Altair's. Now this is what I call a final boss. Probably. After you defeat Altair, Regulus helps him escape. Then you get a somewhat foreboding bit of dialogue from Sirius. What's that about? I thought we were friends, dude. Well, if you collect all the gold cards in every single level and then fight Altair one more time, you just might be treated to even more of Akifumi Tada's brilliant music. But I won't spoil it, just in case any of you want to give Bomberman 64 a try for the first time, which I highly recommend. 
I know you think I forgot, but I remembered. The sample sources, right? Well, this was a tough one. There doesn't seem to be much information about what equipment he might have been using at the time, but if my ear is correct, I believe I have some answers. First of all, I believe many of these instrument samples were designed by Akifumi himself. And if I'm right, his synths of choice were the Roland D50 and the Roland SC88. I was able to cross-reference the nylon guitar and the accordion with the Roland sound canvas, so those were pretty easy to confirm. The rest, I can only say that it sounds a lot like some Roland D50 presets with some tweaks. These synths are pretty hard to come by these days unless you have lots of money, so yep, you guessed it. I made a sound font inspired by Bomberman 64 so you can make your own music using these cool sounds. It's called Boom Guy 64. This sound font contains 30 individual instruments and six different drum kits, all of which are designed to sound just like Bomberman 64, but of course, without using any copyrighted material. The best part is, it's totally free. There is an optional high quality version if you want to spend like three bucks, but the full original regular sound font doesn't cost a thing. Anyway, here's a quick demonstration. You know, when I was a kid, this was one of those games that I would turn on just to have the music playing in the background while I was drawing pictures or playing with toys. To this day, there's not a single theme from this game that I don't like. I only wish I could talk about all of them. If I could meet Akifumi Tada today, I would simply thank him for the warm memories. What soundtrack brings back fond memories of your younger days? Let me know in the comments, I love reading them. Check out my coffee shop for a collection of free and cheap sound fonts inspired by your favorite games. And last but not least, my patrons. McKay Voiles, Cryonic Sage 7719, Evan Troop, Selena, Twilight Realm, Justin Hawes, Devox, Elias Aceri. Sorry if I mispronounced that. You can correct me. And Sample Text 64. From the bottom of my heart, thank you all for the support, and I will see you next time.